<laughs> so we got three viewers again. So um, maybe maybe what we can do is, Amitai, if you want to start us off and talk about just the concepts of TDD and modeling, I think you would probably be the best person to talk about that and why we're doing this exercise. OK, I'll keep it short, because this should be more about the doing than about the lecturing, especially if I'm lecturing. Um, TDD and mob programming are two different things. TDD is short for test-driven development. And uh, test-driven development is a, an old idea at this point. It's at least 20 years old. Kent Beck says he rediscovered it. He didn't invent it. And the idea is that each new thing you want your program to do as a programmer, you name it as sort of a true or false thing that it does. And of course, by default, it's probably false because your program doesn't do everything you wish for to begin with. So one thing at a time, you say, here's one more thing I wish my program did. And it's a little bit of code that exercises your program and you make it true. And then you make one more wish and you make that wish true. And as you go, all the wishes that you've ever made accumulate and it tells you whether they're all still true or anything stopped being true. And so in this way, you can design one idea at a time what your program should do. That's TDD. So far, so good there? Yep. Cool. Uh, I can talk more about why I love it so much later, but we can do a little bit of it first. And then mob programming is a technique for a group of people, not all of whom have to know everything about everything, to work on the same problem at the same time on the same computer, which is what we're going to do now. OK. All awesome. right. I'm ready. Cool. Um, so major technique for mob programming is that the person with the keyboard is nice. It's, it's a little bit different from pair programming, if you've seen that. In pair programming, typically, the person with the keyboard is kind of on the spot. They're being watched. Uh, they're the ones with the ideas. They might be the one who's a little more junior as a programmer or less aware of this problem domain. And they're supposed to sort of think on their feet while they're typing while being watched. That's tough. Uh, and then the other person is maybe more senior and knows the problem domain better. Uh, but somehow has to retain attention when someone else is trying to solve this problem. And so we're not going to do that. This is different. This is strong style pairing, which is an idea from Llewellyn Falco and is a keystone of my programming where the person with the keyboard does not think. They receive instructions from other people. So maybe I'll start with the keyboard because I've got the computer here just to get us rolling. And maybe Troy, you can talk me through what to do first. Sure. Okay. So I will, I'll just, while you're setting that up, um, so strong style pairing is pretty much the only style pairing that I currently coach, just, at, you know, on my current engagement. So what we're going to do here is what I facilitate in coach in real life. So um, I think this is a good example of it. And so basically what we're going to do here with four people, so imagine just with two, that's strong style pairing. Oh, so just a little bit of explanation of what this is. This is Cyber Dojo, which is like an online development environment. It comes with all the languages you could imagine, a whole bunch of programming exercises, uh, and all of them are hooked up with a basic test runner or your choice of test runner for that language. So we picked Python because there's not a lot of ceremony to it. We picked PyTest because it's really straightforward. Uh, there's more to Cyber Dojo if you really want to know more, but for now we're just going to use it as a, a cheap way to be programming together. So here we are with an example. So Troy, what is the problem we're actually trying to solve? I don't think it's this. <laughs> okay. Is anyone yeah. is anyone on the call familiar with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Never heard of it. No. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does anyone know the meaning of life? That's the question. No. Okay. Well, the meaning of life is forty-two. Okay. So okay. as you can see, Cyber Dojo has set up for us uh, a test called the Life. The universe and everything, right? And the universe and everything says we're going to assert, which is on line six, that the answer to life is 42. Okay. So uh, we can do something called running this test, and we're going to see if that's true or not. But maybe Amitai, you can run the test. And we'll see what happens to see if the meaning of life is in tr truly 42. This is a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy joke. And as we can see, there's a big failure. And how you know that, because it says the word failure right on the screen. So right there for you, OK? So the test has failed. And the reason why is actually at line uh, 14 and 15 is that 54 is not equal to 42. Okay? 
So first thing I'm gonna show you is, right now we were working in what's called a test file. So the actual code is in a program file called hiker, hiker.py. Oh. And as you can see, lines four through six, uh, that is the four, th four and five, that is the actual function that makes that code work okay, that we just tested. And six times nine is not 42. So what I would suggest is maybe change the nine to a seven and see what happens if we do that. And it passed. Okay, so we know that now our test has worked and we have successfully tested that um, we're going to return 42. We're assert that the answer is 42. So that's a little bit of a Hitchhiker's Guide joke. So what we're going to do today is something called FizzBuzz. So let's go to the instructions. Wait, can I ask a question first? Yep. So as somebody who's not a programmer, when I'm looking at all this code, I'm kind of like a little confused and don't know what most of it means. Sure. Does that matter? No, oh, because I think you'll figure it out within a couple of minutes. But I'm going to maybe you can. Like if you're, if you're doing mobbing in person, does the fact that like you've got somebody who doesn't know how to code, is that a massive hindrance or is that okay? It doesn't need to be. Uh, okay. if, you know, if you feel like you're not able to be included in the problem solving process because you can't read and nobody explained what they're thinking about, then yes. And that's a good time to say, hey, would you like to explain that in more detail to make me part of this? Or would you rather, you know, speak at a programmer level and leave me out this time? Just to make it explicit. But yeah, I think you'll find as we go here that it's going to become clearer to you and you will be able to see the problem solving process. And, and this not, would also be a way that you know, could get cross functionality on a team, right? Exactly. Right. right. Okay. And the idea with it, it's in fact, it's a nice design pressure on the behavior of a team that's doing my program to have someone there that doesn't know everything so that the team has to explain a little better. And that's, that's one of the benefits of strong style pairing, which we'll see as we do it, that in order for an idea to get into the code, into the software, it has to get, out of somebody's head, through their mouth, through someone else's hands, and in. And so we all kind of participate in the making. We all, the, the idea doesn't go straight from, I think this is brilliant, let me type it in and not explain anything. It's green, great, everybody understood that, right? No, I don't. But if you had to say it out loud, maybe we would. Yeah. So, okay. so I think the first thing maybe we should explain is, is the tenets of test-driven development, right? So the tenets are to write a failing test first, okay? So before we write any code, we're going to test something. Okay? So we call that, that's like a term people will use for a failing test. Okay? Then we write code to make that test pass. Okay? And the simplest amount of code to make a test pass, that's the key. And we call that green. Okay? And then the last part is refactor. And refactoring is changing the code to one to even make it more readable, to maybe make more sense, to change the actual design of it. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do in refactoring, but all of those, you go through that same cycle over and over and over again, and you test every time. So you write a failing test and you run the test. You write the code, pass it, you run the test, you refactor, you run the test. So it's, that, it's a basically a discipline. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Today. Should we think about FizzBuzz, the real problem we care about? Yes. And then maybe by it. doing it, we'll see more of what we mean? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so here's the instructions. So CyberDojo started us off with hitchhiker stuff, both code and tests, uh, but we're not actually trying to do hitchhiker stuff. So what we're trying to do is this thing called FizzBuzz, which I guess is a children's game. I never knew this game until I was a programmer. But uh, the idea is for each number, we could we could play this with the four of us. Uh, on my screen, let's go in this order. I'll go first, and then Rachel, and then Troy, and then Dave. We'll just sure. go around. Uh, and so the idea is, if the number is a multiple of three, if it divides three evenly, then you say fizz. If it's a multiple of five, if five goes into it evenly, you say buzz. And if it's both, which means like 15 or 30 or whatever, then you say fizz buzz instead of the number. So Are we supposed to be drinking when we do this? I think that helps. <laughs> <laughs> but the degree of difficulty for programming for non-programmers may be high enough. So let's see. So I'll go first. One. Rachel. Oh, I'm next. Two. Yeah. Troy. Fizz. Mm -hmm. Dave. Four. And then if I think really hard and don't actually look at what's on the screen, I might independently arrive at buzz. <laughs> Fizz. Seven. Eight. Fizz. 
Wait, buzz. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so you can fair. see why you <laughs> might want the computer to help you with this, because it's a very difficult thing for humans to keep in their head. Maybe we should be drinking. <laughs> but so that's the game. And the idea is we want a program that, given a number, will say the number or the right word. And then it'll do that for all numbers from 1 to 100. That's where we're headed. Does that make sense as a program? Yep. Yep. OK. Um, Troy, should we rotate? Or do you want to talk me a little bit through it first? And then uh, I'll just talk you a little bit through it first, and okay. I'll, I'll kind of ask them questions. And OK. And do we want to have a timer, or do we just want to pick our spots and rotate? Um, I'll, you know what? I'll keep track of the time. OK. Um, Okay, so we'll do three minutes, I guess. Sure. Okay, so the first thing uh, we should do is go into the testhiker.py because what we're going to do is we're actually going to write everything in one test file, so it's it's simpler for you guys. We don't have to keep going back and forth in the files. So should I delete hikerpy just to get it out of the way? Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Okay, we're just going to okay. here. Maybe rename this one. I'm doing a lot of thinking for somebody at the keyboard. I guess stop. <laughs> you should rename that file. Oh, thank you for this idea. Yes. What should we call it? Anyone who isn't me? Test, Test buzz. buzz. Test Fizz Buzz. Test Fizz Buzz. Okay, so I would say the first thing we should do is get rid of the code that has nothing to do with it. So maybe lines four through set six. And I want to, guys, what do you think the simplest thing is now that you know the instructions, now that you know the exceptions criteria? What do you think the simplest thing is we can test? What do we want to validate? Can we make it create a list of numbers one to 100? We could, but can we test anything simpler than that is the question. I mean, can really. Can we make it call three fizz, a multiple okay. of three fizz? We could do that. Simply? <laughs> it's a good idea, but it kind of sucked. So well, let, me, let me tell you this. So there's two special cases, if you think about it, before we even get to this, right? That we know is never going to be part of this as a great. So those are one and two. So maybe we should test if we send one, if we type one, we get a one back, right? We want to see if that even works, if we know how to do that. And that would be one thing I would test. Okay. So I'll, I'll start that off. So I'm going to tell you, if you can assert uh, that if you send one, we get it back. So the, what was it? I'm going to just steal the syntax here. If, what? If, we send, if we send one to uh, a function, and we don't know what they call the function yet. Uh, any thoughts of what we should call our main function? That cause Right now we're going to test our code. So what, what should we call the code? Should we call it any thoughts? Main function. Main function. Okay. Let's call it that. So I get like a point or a star or anything? Yes, yeah, so you get a star and a story point too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to level up. Man. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so Dave gets a star. So one, one thing I want to stop here is that the fact that Amitai knows how to code in Python makes it easy for me to just say, Amitai, do this, right? For you guys, we're going to actually have to explain what to type. And that's, that is something that will happen in real life as well with different people with different skill levels. So right now, uh, it is three minutes. So we have to rotate. Okay. okay. Uh, Just who would like to take the keyboard and not have to think at all? Rachel. I love not thinking. I've been thinking all day. <laughs> all right. Don't pass me the keyboard. Sure will. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right. Looks like I can, I can now. Who wants to navigate? Who wants to be the main navigator? I guess uh, since I typed last, I'll, I'll navigate now. Is that a good pattern? Okay. And Dave, you can feel the chime in at any time. You know, yeah, you want anybody to. can navigate. Okay. That's true, too. Uh, I think we just lost the line numbers. Let me bring them back. There we go. Oh, shoot. Sorry. People want to refer to them as we go. Apparently, I didn't know this in CyberDojo until just now. If you click where the line numbers are, they like call them. Can and Z? Nice Does that work here? <laughs> <laughs> I think not. Yeah. Okay. So let's okay. see. 
Uh, where did Troy leave us? Let's run the tests and see what happens. I'm not sure what I expect. I think maybe so what, I have a question. Yeah. I, have, I have a question. What does a cert actually mean? Ooh, okay. Uh, what What do you think it might mean, or do you have no idea? Well, I know what it means in real life. I don't know what it means in Python. <laughs> what does it mean in real life? You're trying to just prove something. Yeah. So okay. cert is the name of a function I think provided by Pytest. Oh, I'm not hard censure. I don't know Python that well. Uh, it might be a Python function. I don't know. But okay. it's saying uh, if whatever the result of doing this is, is there whatever the result of doing this is, and this one's much simpler, if they're okay. equal, then it starts happy. And if they're for some reason not equal, then it starts will do something, which we saw uh, in the initial version of this when it was still Hitchhiker. It gave us those failures and failure and 54 is not equal 42. So that's okay. what a cert will do when they're not the same. We'll be able to see it. And when they okay. are the same, it's just happy. Okay, right. yeah. so I can hit test? Yeah, I think a uh, number of things are wrong here and we'll see what they are. <laughs> yeah, and the important thing is I don't have to know what they are. I can run the test and it will tell me if I pay attention what I should pay attention to. So we can see failures. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's yeah. see what I can see here. Uh, we haven't function. created a function. Yeah, that's the thing. So uh, right. we, we called this thing called main function because they suggested that name but we never made it exist. So let's make it exist. Okay. Uh, go now? back to, on the left side, go to test fizzbuzz.by. Oh, on the left side, go, wait. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. And uh, move the cursor down past, you know, make a new line at, at six or seven or something. So click in there okay. and then hit enter. <clears throat> Sorry, it's not exact. When you click, it doesn't seem to. It's at the end of the file there. So if you hit return, it'll make another line. Yeah. Okay. And then so say def, which is a way to say that this function is super cool. <laughs> def. Okay. I learned that on the streets of whiteness. Um, and so this one is not going to be a test. This is going to be a function. We're just going to call it main underscore function. So def is actually uh, how we tell Python that this thing is going to be a function. Uh, so it's not we, another file, it's just another part of this file. Yeah, we're just yes. going to do all our work in this file, keep it simple there. Got it. Uh, so we'll have the tests in here and the code in here, which is not normally how you do production, but it is a good learning technique. So we also need to, because we have a function that takes a number, we need a way to tell Python expect one thing to be given to us. So here we'll put a left parenthesis, or sys. Sorry, left what? You clicked that, sorry. Left parenthesis. Left parenthesis, and no spaces or anything? No spaces. I mean, maybe spaces are fine, but I'm just trying to match the style. And then in here, uh, we need another name for something. We need a name for the number that we're given. So what's a name to refer to the number that we're given? Like, like that name? Or not? Like it has sure. to be different? Can be. It'll be different each time. So we want a name that refers to the idea of the thing that we're being given. So that does work? How about given number? Okay. Given number. Okay. I like it. Yep. Okay. So given... And one, to Python, one that's two words. We need it to be one okay. word. So put an underscore in between, and then it counts okay. as one word. Yeah, and then a right friend and a colon. Okay. That's a semicolon. That's cool. Yep. Uh, and then let's try running the test again. See if that makes that problem go away. Maybe we'll have a different problem. But we wait. We didn't tell what given number was. Yeah, that's we true. definitely didn't. Yep. <laughs> uh, Okay, we got an error this time. Uh, expected an indented block. Okay, I've seen this before. This is not obvious. This is this is a programming language yelling at you, and it can be a little scary. But I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. Go back to test his buzz. Yep. Okay. And uh, I think you need to hit enter or return, and then tab. And then Python just didn't believe that that was totally a function yet. So uh, type the word return here which just means like, we know that we're at the end of this function, please go back to whatever called it. Now try running the test again. Okay. And I think we'll get a different problem. Did I just hear that you do, you do your tabs, not spaces? Is that what it is? In it's Python, like? it's super particular about white space. Uh, you have to tab, yeah. yeah. You have to tab, okay. It's just, yeah. uh, <laughs> I just know as a plot in Silicon Valley, it was yeah. uh, it made, it destroyed lives, <laughs> so. That's realistic, actually, yeah. 
so we got a better failure this time. This is not a scary looking thing with paths and yelling at us. This is failures of the style that uh, we called main function with the one expecting to get a one back. And what we got was not 54 or 42 or one, it was none. So this is better. Our function exists, it just doesn't do the thing, right? Troy, is it done rotate? It is, so Dave, you're up. All right. So I take control, request remote control. Oh, I can probably just give it to you. Yeah, I think you can. Okay. And Dave, as soon as you get the control, test it again. Mm -hmm. This is part of the discipline. Every time we rotate, the new person tests. Like it's okay. a, like a thing. So we failed again. Oh, every time. <laughs> we expect that though. So this success is going to be hard earned. <laughs> no stars for you, Dave. I know. Okay, so we failed the test again. Okay, so if you go back to test. Oh, should I navigate now? Who should navigate? Well, Rachel was in the middle of typing some stuff. Maybe she could tell okay. us what she thought was happening there and we can pitch in okay. as needed. But wait, so I'm confused about this. So when the timer, when the buzzer, the three minute buzzer goes off, what are we, what, what switches? The person typing and the person navigating different? Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. am I typing now and she's navigating? Yep, and we'll help navigate as needed. Okay. Yep. <laughs> You're both yeah. screwed now. Yeah, the, rest, the, rest, the rest of the mom can pretty much help out, so. Yeah. Okay, so go back to test underscore fizzbuzz, and then is there anything else that I need to suggest? We have to define what main function is. No, we define what given number is, right? Yeah. So what are we going to return here? Return a number. We have a test that wants us to give it a one. So what if we just put one, return space one? That might be enough to make the test pass, and then we can think about whether we like that or not. Cool. I'm better than you, Rachel. Yeah, you are. <laughs> we should definitely put this code in production immediately. <laughs> we are winning over here. Adding value. Okay. It's all about outcomes, right? <laughs> all right. So now what do we do? Um, so if it passed, we created a test that failed and we created a test that passed. So now we need to set parameters around the test so that we can prove it. <laughs> we will want to do that for sure. I think the <laughs> okay. referring back to what uh, Troy was telling us early on, there's the, the idea of red and then green and then refactor. Yeah. So we got a lot of experience okay. with red. We just okay. got a taste of green. And okay. so this is while we're green, this is an important time to reflect on how do we feel about the nature of this greenness? Is it a nice greenness or is this a smash together greenness? And can we make it a little nicer before we take a next step? So my feeling is that there's a couple things here that are slowing us down if we leave them the way they are. And so now's a good time to quickly do something about it. One is on line one where it says import hiker. That yep. is dead code. Delete that line. Oops. Okay. It's it. left over from when we had a file called that and we were thinking about the hitchhiker and we're not thinking about that anymore. Okay. So try running tests whole, again and see if there's still I thought passing. the whole point was just to leave all the junky code in there and not tell anybody <laughs> what it was. <laughs> there is there is a career path that looks like that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that didn't break anything, which I didn't so think it would. Can I, ask, no. can I ask a question? Yeah. So, so we know that what this is doing is actually generating one inside the program, but it's not showing us anything. Like it's not showing us the one. Don't we want to see the number? Yeah, we could somewhere. think about it a little further ahead. Like you're you're been a programmer for some years and you've worked on this code for some months. Okay. What you want to know about is when one of your eight thousand unit tests is red. Yes. When it's green, your screen is going to be blank and that's happy as long as you trust the test actually ran, which you okay. you would be at that point because it could get super noisy when you have thousands and thousands and thousands on a on a production system. You just want to okay. see you know what should I pay attention to because I broke it. Okay. You can, the, it's possible to run these verbosely and then it will say the name of the test and the greenness of the test and so on and so forth. I don't know how to do it in Cyber Dojo. So you can. It's time to switch it. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. all right. Okay. So who's next? So I was just, uh, the thing I was asking was, don't, don't we want it to like 
I don't know. I'm thinking like when I learned basic, we wanted to print the number on the screen and show us what the number is. I see what you mean. So, so yeah, right now what we have, if you look at test this was, it's only a test function and a main function. Whoopsie. Yeah. Uh, but there's no regular program that you could actually run. And okay. you're, you're thinking of like, I'm at the command line. I've written a program. I should be able to run it and see some stuff. Yeah. I haven't actually done that yet. Okay. So it would be an easy thing to add. Uh, we could do that next. <laughs> but then there was a train. Yeah, that's over here. I live right on top of a train. Okay, so who's navigating now? I am. Okay, Dave. Well, so I we know that it's generating a number, and every time we wanted to keep generating more numbers, right? And keep incrementing by one. Well, we got to refactor now. So uh, let's 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 think about how we can make this code one make just more sense. There's a few things I noticed that don't make a lot of sense, but I want to see if you have any. A problems. lot of this doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> The death for the test is naming life in the universe, right? So is that incorrect? Oh, yes. So that needs to be test, what we call it? test physics. Okay. Is that the same? We can. Yeah. I mean. Let's do that and see what happens. Does it make sense to, to like match the title of the sure. yeah. file title with the test name? Mm -hmm. The caps matter? Uh, only stylistically, but style could matter so i would say lowercase. just got negative points for style yeah. yeah there goes that story point <laughs> all right that's one thing uh, yeah. anything else jumps out to you guys in the mob as well before we do anything else we should run the test and make sure they're just as good right good point okay mm -hmm. so what does equal equal mean Not that's equal. what that is right equal equal is to be distinguished from one equal one equal means make the thing on the left be the thing on the right assign it, assign the result of that to me. Double equal means uh, is the same as or not the same as, it's a question mark. Okay. Yeah. Right, so if we're, if we're saying, we're sending a one that it actually equals a one getting back, right, that's basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, in the mob, any thoughts about what else we can refactor when it comes to this? I don't know that we need to, I can see some things that I can guess that we're gonna wanna refactor, but I don't see a need to do it yet. I'm interested okay. to see blank us handle. Lines. What's that? Blank lines, is that an issue? Like we've got that, there's two blank lines at the top. Oh, sure. Do they bother you? You can take them out. It's causing me emotional trouble. Please, I don't want take that. Take them out? Yeah. Okay. I don't have control. I got it. I feel better, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what's next, Dave and Mob? Um, well, so this stuff is refactored now. Don't we want to then make it do something else, like keep yeah. incrementing the number by one? We yeah, want to write a new test. Mm -hmm. We want to what? We want to write a new test now. Okay. So, so now far, we're the only thing we know is that if we give it a one, we'll get a one. Uh, I know that the problem says if we give it a two, we should get a two. But I'm not sure if it would do that yet. So maybe that's a good test. Oh, maybe we should do that then. <laughs> we should create a new test. You want to create a new test or you want to keep it in this test? I'll do whatever you say. Uh, I'm going to go with keep it in this test. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, I felt like there was some leading uh, information uh -huh. there. You want, to, you want to say? You want to, you want to go? What, do you, what, what an do? interesting pedagogical technique, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the cooking. That's the cooking. <laughs> misspelled function. Oh, good point. Good point. There's like a kind of trip us up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did that on purpose as well. So I, I have a question. When when you guys are like doing this for real, are you kind of like on top of each other anytime somebody makes a typo? Because there's a certain person I know who, if they're watching someone else type, jumps on them like a rabbit anytime <laughs> they wrong letter in there. What you do? <laughs> no, it's not me. It's actually something that happened that both both <laughs> which I actually know. Yeah. Okay, so I wrote that test. Okay. Should test that. So let's test it. Okay. Huh. Fail. Fail. Did we think oh. it was going to pass or did we think it was going to fail before? No, we, we didn't do the thing at the bottom. We have to do the other thing too. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Let's try it then. Come on, you guys. <laughs> Table flip. All right. So, how do we make this thing pass, Dave? 
uh, we have to add another th another version of this def main function return equals return one. Return I don't know what two? we have to do, but yeah, how do we get it to return two? I know a little Python. Uh, would you like an idea <laughs> you some about skills that? You can bring here? Okay. Actually, it's time to rotate it anyways. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm the keyboard now, right? I'm the driver? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I have it. Okay. Uh, and then whose turn to navigate? Troy, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should, how, how should I fix the problem? I'm <clears throat> should I let them switch it? <laughs> what do you think? All right, I'll fix it. Okay, so uh, I think we should. Uh, oh, if all we're going to do is try to make, if all we're going to do is try to make that this new test pass, we can do that. So all this is doing right now is saying main function equals one or equals two, but prove that it equals one, that's why it's failing. It's not allowed to be anything other than one still, right? Yeah, because we haven't returned anything that says two. Right. Yeah, all we have right now is wh however we call main function, we return one. And so that's great when we give it a one, it's less great when we give it a two. So on line seven, can you, um, well, I mean, honestly, we should change return one to return given underscore number. That's what we should. Okay. <clears throat> to return what? Oh. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to return whatever we send it. So one becomes given number is what we return, two becomes given number is what we return, and then maybe that makes this pass. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So on line five, we see it says def main function parentheses given number, right? Yeah. The number is uh, is an argument. It's it, that's what they call it. But basically, it's a it's a it's goes to a variable, so it could be any number, like, mm -hmm. not any specific hard coded number, right? So we're calling this variable. We're calling it given number. Essentially. So when so, you guys are doing this in real life, do you actually run the test after every single line of code you write, or do you write a whole bunch thinking you're going to get it right and then test? Try it? not to, because usually I'm wrong when I think that. So Amitai does this a lot more than I do, so I would defer to his. Uh, Okay. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, if I feel really confident in all the code I'm about to write, and it's all demanded into existence by a test, and I'm pretty sure I could do it right the first time, then maybe. So basically, you mean if you're a developer? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sarcasm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and then the trick is, if I'm a good developer, I notice when I've been overconfident. And <laughs> okay. I adjust, and I probably take smaller steps next well time. Played, and if I'm a great <laughs> developer, which I'm not, then I would remember from last time, just take small steps to begin with, and then I won't okay. regret it. Got it. I'm just good. So, so <laughs> we, made that change. we made that change, so let's run the yeah. test. Yeah. Oh, cool. look at that. Solid. Right. So that's so a green. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any refactor, Troy? Anybody else? I'm still bothered by the fact that we're not making the number increase every time. Like I, don't, I don't understand what's happening. So we're saying it equals one or it equals two and it's returning whatever it equals. So we're just sending the two cases before we get to the I think it's about to get more interesting. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain, is it okay for me to ask, uh, so we have is or is not one. Is that, do we want that? Is like, why do we want to try to have it does or it doesn't? Or I don't know. I'm just trying to get clarity on the double equals. Double equals is saying, I'm, okay, if you read line two, right? Yeah. I'm going to assert, yeah. uh, when I send it a one, I get a one back. That It's going to equal one. That's all it means. Okay. I'm trying to explain it in like English language. Right. <laughs> okay, so even though it says is or is not, it's still when it is, it will be, and when it's not, it won't? Is that kind of... <laughs> Right, so so, so Amitai, if you can change the one to a three in line two, see what happens. This one? Uh, yeah, sure. No, that won't work. Right. What do we think? What do we think is going to happen? It's going to fail. It's gonna fail. Uh, what's it going to say? It's going to say it failed because one is not equal three. Right. Right. And then it's going to say buzz. <laughs> Someday it will. Yeah. yeah there we go. So we we wished okay. that it would be true that main function of one would give us three, which is a weird wish, but we wanted to see what happens. And it turns out so close. that it does not. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's change That's the facts. Fake news right there. Yeah. Alternative facts. All right, we changed it back. We ran the test. It's time to switch. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, give it to Rachel. What am I doing? Yeah. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then I believe that I am navigating primarily. Yep. So we're at green. Uh, that makes me think, so there's the red green refactor. It's a mantra. We lived with red a little bit. We're at green, and that means I get to think about refactor. Yes, good idea. Run the test again. Yeah. I like it. It's always a good thing to do to begin with, uh, just so you know where you're starting. Okay. okay. So I'm going to think for a second if there's any cheap refactoring that makes me feel better. And if I can think of one, we'll do it. And if I can't, we'll go on to the next part of the problem. Um, I think that instead of main function, I'd like to call it fizzbuzz. So every, yeah, everywhere it says main underscore function, just change it to lowercase fizzbuzz, one word. And we don't need the function part. Yeah, just oh. fizzbuzz. Yeah. Sorry, it's not a little slow here. You got some lag. Fizzbuzz, you said with no underscore? Yeah, that looks good to me. Yep, and then we have two places that we call that on line two and three. And where they say main function, they also need to say fizzbuzz. I suppose it'd be faster if I copy paste this. Maybe. Another That's trick, you slow. could double click in the middle of main function and it'll select the word. Oh, but really? you got it already, so you're good. Okay. Yep. Okay, so this is a good time to run the test again. Okay. <laughs> yep, uh, I like it. And one more little thing. Yes, please go back to the test fizz buzz pie. And the capital B on line one is putting a capital B in my capital bonnet. There we go. <laughs> yes, that should be just as good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whew. okay. Troy, was that bothering you for a while? No, that's okay. That's okay. okay. I can't tell if you were. Okay, just me. All right. I feel better. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so we were green and we refactored, so we can pick our next little piece of red. I would like to see uh, after line three, so put your cursor after the last two and then hit enter or return uh, tab and assert that fizzbuzz of three. This is where it gets interesting. Double equals fizz. Fizz, but with double quotes around it because it's a word. Double quotes. Yeah. You want to explain why we do that? Oops. Uh, yeah, I'll explain how we do that by don't put the double quotes and then run the test. I, <laughs> can I, can I, <laughs> yes. I wanted to guess. Yeah. Okay, What's guess, the guess no, before no. we do it? So if you don't put the quotes, it thinks it has to return that value. If you put the quotes around it, it's just going to be a, something it puts in its place. Like okay. It's, That's interesting. That right? yeah. Let's see what happens. It's like a reference. Fizz is not defined. Uh -huh. So that's kind of similar to when we wished for main function but didn't have main function yet, right? And that's actually not what we want here. We don't want to make a function or a variable called fizz. We just want to have the actual text fizz. The actual text. So that's just like, in, yeah, OK. So when you're looking for text, you put the quotations. The simple OK. okay. <clears throat> so this should fail for a different reason, which is that fizzbuzz of three gave us three. Oh. Because it always gives us what we put in, right? Yeah, so now we have to do a little thinking. Is it time to rotate we yet? Some, we got some people in the chat, so I'm just saying hi. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, people in the chat. If you have any questions for us, type them in. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. So, yeah, we can rotate. So, who's next? Is it Dave? Okay, so I'm typing in, right? Yeah. Um. Oh, I got to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> and Rachel. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I invited you, Dave. All right. So, somebody Rachel. tell me what to do. Oh, Rachel, uh, Dave, you got to run the test. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we still <Okay>. fail. <laughs> still fail. <laughs> We're consistent, right, though. How, right? We're how are we going to make this pass, Rachel? Okay. So, we know that fizz is not coming up as a, a multiple of three right now because we're not testing for multiples of three. So do we need to test for multiples of three? 
Yeah, how would you do this in English? And then we can think about how to do it in Python. To test for multiples of three, can you hold man, this is math for me. This is tough. Um, <laughs> oh, can I guess? Yeah, sure. It's a given number. It's not is a multiple. It is a multiple of three. We want to call it fizz instead of the number. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so define. That's true. Good. And then otherwise return the number. Yeah. Okay. So Dave, then we can. Did the word, Dave, did you say the word if? Because I think if. that's. I did. <laughs> okay. How interesting. I just didn't say then. <laughs> All right. All right, go ahead. So, okay. So, so we have to change this. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Should I be a person who jumps on a wrong idea immediately, like you were saying, Dave? Yes, that's me. Okay, uh, I would put that back to Fizz, because what this is saying is what we wish would happen, and our wish is not wrong. Oh, okay. Right? Wishes are it's, never it's what actually happens that doesn't meet our wish. So we so, always write the wish first, which is a test. Okay. So Fizz buzz given number, return the given number. If the given number is a multiple of three, Mm -hmm. We want to call it fizz. Yeah. So how do we say that in Python? Would you like a, a hint? I would like a hint. I'd like to buy a hint. Okay. Uh, before line seven, in between six and seven, to make a new line in between six and seven. Yeah. Good. Ah, I lost you guys. I lost the audio there. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Back in. Can't hear you anymore, I'm sorry. Oh, Hello? yeah, no, he just stopped talking. You're gonna oh. have to mime everything. Oh, now. I think I got muted. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so exciting, right. programming live. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, type the word if in a space. And then uh, the math for whether a number is a multiple of three, I happen to know as a programmer. Uh, there's there's a, an operator called modular division, which is like. Oh, you got muted again. Okay, I'm gonna just quit that. No, I can hear you. I like you. Uh, I think yeah, I think I understand what happened, and I just prevented it from happening again. If I'm right, so uh, the idea is modular division. The way you say it in Python is not that. Uh, it's way more cryptic. It's a percent <laughs> sign. It would be nice if you were right. Uh, actually, <laughs> well, I'm just going to keep typing stuff whether I'm right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, in this case, we want to know if if given number modularly divided by three leaves a remainder of zero, then it's a multiple of three. In the way to okay. type that, that, I'll just tell you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so backspace one, and say given underscore number. All right. Space uh, percent space three space equal equal space zero and then Troy help me out is this a colon yeah it's a colon yeah colon and then enter return tab twice tab uh, Backspace once and then tab twice. Backspace twice from where you are now. Yeah, delete uh, that. Twice more. What? We're going to remove this oh, thing. Yeah. And then tab twice from here. Yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, then in this case, return the word return. Type, type the word return. Yes, this happened to us. <laughs> space. Uh, instead of an equals, a space. And then a double quote, no equals. Uh, return is like a, a function saying get out of here. Damn. Okay. Get this value. And then the word fizz. And then another couple quotes. All right. Try running. No, I feel like compelled to do like the one for number five at the same time as I'm doing this. And that's something I should not do, right? Correct. I want to get might, as much. This might not work. We don't know if this works. Yeah, we don't even know. It's going to work. It's probably we not going to work, guys. Just <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, it totally probably. worked. <laughs> okay. Nice. Disappointed. Wait, it worked? Is this here. 
No, because you want it to fail so that you know if it can pass. Like you we, told me. We did me. that though. But did. you're adding new stuff. I thought you wanted it to fail no, first. First we wrote the test for fizz and it failed. And then uh -huh. we made the class. That's what we did. So I want to know how to make the assert number keep growing by one automatically so that we don't have to type an infinity of assert fizz buzz parenthesis numbers. Yes. First we should refactor them. Okay. <clears throat> but I think I should, I, we should switch them. Okay. Okay. So I'll take you. So now I'm supposed to drive or tell you what to do? Yep. Uh, what's going to bother you here? Well, there was, well, I guess it, that one thing is nested inside the other, but that doesn't matter because it's part of the thing above it. Um, I don't see anything that we would have to fix. Okay. Amitai or, or Rachel, anything you want to change? Is, would refactoring involve changing instead of like just a, a string of numbers where it says assert, would we be able to create a, a line that would just say if uh, basically a negative, like assert fizzbuzz is not or something like that? Would that make it easier? I'm not sure I understand the idea. Like, like we have a string where it's like one, two, right? Asserts, like, and we're talking about making things simpler. So mm -hmm. is it easier to say instead of assert something is to say assert it isn't? It could be. Uh, there are cases I've seen where that's an easier thing to say. Uh, okay. like whatever this function does doesn't matter a lot as long as it's not this. This would be infinity otherwise. Like you could, right? I mean, it would just go Yeah, on. okay. So this, I see what you're getting at. Right. So we could write asserts for every single number and, right. and never stop. So that's, this is <laughs> illustrating a design question about what TDD is for and how we know we've tested enough. Because infinity is too much. We know that for a fact. Um, enough is the things that I'm worried about that I could have made mistakes on uh, are all covered as best as I can tell. The things that we know from the instructions or the requirements or the user needs that they specifically asked for, we had tests for those. Um, so, and there just aren't mistakes that I can think of that would be easy to make that I don't already have tests for. So we'll see when the code starts to shape up a little bit more, uh, we'll realize that it probably does handle the general case and we can pick a few examples and make sure of that and decide to stop there. Does that make sense? Okay. So if we know that we're eventually going to be increasing this, this fizz buzz number by one, shouldn't we put in a test for the buzz then? Well, so I we're mean, at green. Since, we could definitely think about that we're, next. Since we're green and we've already got the basic format of it in here for fizz, wouldn't it make sense at this point to put in the one for, for buzz? We just copy that and retype it, right? Just change the thing. Could be. Are we pretty sure we handle four correctly, or do we need to make a no? Test for it? I, I, we haven't. We haven't done four. But that's what I'm asking: is is would it make sense to just not worry about four yet? Because I'm assuming we're going to write something that's going to say, always increment this number by one. Uh, I don't think that we are going to do that. Okay. Um, I would do that if we were in legacy code, and I wanted to make sure that I understood everything that it actually does for every input that matters. But this is code that we're test driving. So we're Your designing as we go. So it's just the things that we aren't sure about that we want to test. Your quotes are wrong. Well, that's the tricky thing about Python. Mm -hmm. I can give you the one of them, but that's... I'm but so, yeah, I think we can skip four. Uh, in fact, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to need to come back and test four. I'm pretty sure that our code is going to handle four. If somebody disagrees, we could try it real quick. No, I, I mean... I think it's pretty obvious from one and two. Right. <laughs> we'll come back as well. <laughs> okay, so we have a red test. Sorry, I, I was going to say I trust you, but I wouldn't know sort of functionally how to know that this would pass if it was four. Okay, in that case, go the... we should write a test. I mean, okay. we don't have to. <laughs> it's, easy. it's super easy. So let's do it and let's decide that we're equally confident or equally unconfident. Okay. That's worth doing. Yeah, so let's test four, four. and that should give back a literal four. I vote okay. based on my understanding that's probably going to work. Okay. But and that doesn't mean so... that we shouldn't have written that test. That just means if it was me solo, I wouldn't have written that test. But it's not yeah, the thing is, I don't know why yeah. it passed. That's the problem mm -hmm. with my brain. <laughs> okay, so let's write more tests and maybe it'll start to make sense as we go. Time to switch as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's up? Right. Um, I think, I think so. it's you. 
Yeah. I take keyboard. Wait. Or who went first? You, Amitai? Yeah, he went uh, first. I had keyboard first. I go yeah. last, so it is you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So where am I right now? I am running the test to find out. I am at green because we handle these four cases, so we can think about refactoring, right, Troy? Yes. So we are ready to refactor if we want. Can we remove the line of four, like the assertion, because you don't really need it, I guess. Uh, well, that mean, so I have a testing question. Does that mean that you don't need it if it passed before and all you added was a line and it didn't make it fail? Yeah. Does that mean that line? That's a really interesting question. Uh, in my opinion, it comes down to what we're afraid of and what we know and why we think we know it. So, uh, Rachel, if you don't have a plausible mechanism in your head by which it makes sense that four should have worked, then this test is valuable. And maybe mm -hmm. later we'll decide that we have a mechanism in our heads and we do understand why four would work and then we can take it out. But if it's something we're at all worried about, if it's something we're at all unconfident about, then that's what tests are for. Okay. That makes sense. I think it's more just like my brain is thinking in a visual way or in a schema that doesn't work with the symbols and the numbers currently. It's just a different schema that I have. So mm -hmm. I would probably need to visualize it differently and then come back to the code and then it would make sense. But interesting. You know, time for that so well it, as we keep going the code is going to start doing all the things we need it to do and then maybe the pattern will pop out of you okay. so let's see if that happens it, it may or may not okay. mm. i'm a time yeah can you on uh, make a new line and write an assert for this buzz five equals buzz and then um okay I got a five instead. Right. Okay. And then um, on line, uh, after line 10, make a new one. Right. Write another if statement. Right. And for five, change that to buzz and let's see if that works. Boom. Man, that was fast. Look at that. <laughs> so does it go that way when you're doing this? If the if the crowd has got if your team has got some people that are not developers, does it tend because it seems like yeah, we sleep. guys, it's going to zip through it, and then if it's me and Rachel, it's like the short yeah. bus left, and we have to. <laughs> uh, so Troy was getting at this earlier, uh, kind of like uh, depending on who's there and who's driving and who's navigating, the the way that we speak about what we're doing and the speed that it goes depends on how many shared abstractions everybody has in common. Uh, okay. And so like Troy and I do a lot of programming, so I could kind of guess where he's going and I could almost anticipate it. Also, I've seen this problem before. Uh, also, I use a text editor in these ways pretty often. So all of that combined, you, right? You, you just made me think of how you could use this for developing content strategy because you, you could totally use this process for that and improving the way you use language to meet a goal. And it's kind of cool, so thank you. I'm curious to hear more about that. Is that a blog post in your head or how's that gonna come out? I, I don't know, I okay. don't know, but I want to discover cool. that. I mean, I have, I'm teaching students right now who probably need to know more about how development works. And I think that this could be really helpful. Um, so if you're nice. wanting to do it again, we should, we should think of how that might work. So I think we should rotate now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I give the keyboard to Rachel. Okay. There you go. And what's the first thing you do when you take the keyboard? Test. Yes. Still green. Happy place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, so Troy gave me, Troy got me from green to red to green, which means that I have a refactor opportunity if I want it. Uh, and I'm thinking back to when I was trying to talk Dave through the modular division thing and realizing that it, it, this is, this is weird to read and it would be nice if it worked more the way that Dave started to type it, where it's the word modular division. So I'm thinking a nice refactoring would be that where we have, uh, check the divisibility by three and check the divisibility of five, that it would look different. So I'm going to try an idea about that. Uh, take your cursor to just at the beginning of line nine okay. and then hit return to make a line before it 
that's where I'm going to try my idea and hit tab to make sure that stays indented where it was and then go back up one. Yep. So my idea is if I could say lines 10 and 12 a little bit differently, a little more Englishy, that would be a nice refactoring and it might still pass the test and then we know that it's good. So what I want to be able to say is if, so keep that part. Sorry, and then, yeah. And then instead of all this funny stuff, I want to be able to, I wish a function existed called is divisible by. So let's say is underscore divisible underscore by uh, underscore. And then a left print. So left what, sorry? Left parenthesis. Great. Is it a parenthesis? I always say parenthesis and I realize that's probably not right. Yeah. Okay. Canadian though, so. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking this takes two numbers. It takes a uh, given number. So the first thing would be given underscore number. That goes here. Oh, oh I actually type in given. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that goes through. <laughs> yeah. Oh comma, God. space. Comma. Wait, sorry. Comma, mm -hmm. space. And then uh, three in this case. Three. Right print. The space double equals. Oh no! Yeah, just that. Uh, back up to the right paren and put a colon right after it. Put a which? Sorry. A colon. Colon. Yeah. So that's what I want to be able to say. Instead of line ten, I want to be able to say line nine, and that's going to crunch in a bad way. But that's what I wish for. Does that make sense? That that's something I should wish for. Be able um, to say it that way instead. This is gross. Don't worry about this. Uh, <laughs> it it doesn't work yet. Okay. Uh, you, you failed. Sorry. But do it we failed. agree? If you had to look at line nine instead of line ten, it would make more sense, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's try and make five? it work. What's that? Can you add five to that string or no? I wouldn't do it at the same time, but I might call no. it a second time with a five instead. Okay. So let's make it work. Uh, go all the way down to fifteen and put a new line after that. 15, new line, like space, you mean? Uh, enter. enter. Turn, yeah. And then say def space is underscore divisible underscore by. Okay, I should copy paste that. So what we're doing now is we're creating a function mm -hmm. that wish existed before. Okay. Yeah, the idea here is I'm programming by wishful thinking. I'm trying to think of how do I think about it and then how do I get the computer to make it match how I think about it. I don't want to have to learn about percent signs unless I really dig into something. I just want to get my <laughs> idea out there, right? So, uh, yeah, so that takes a uh, given underscore number, comma, space. Um, what's the right word? Is this dividend? Is this divisor? I think it's divisor. divisor? The thing we're dividing by. Oh my God, sorry. I don't know. Sure, yeah, uh, colon, colon, yeah. Enter tab. And then this would be a great place to copy paste. Uh, from line 10, grab the part that says uh, from given number all the way through to the end of that line. Yeah, this just grab that line, line, copy it, paste it at 17. And then uh, where it says if, instead of if, say return, uh, on line 17, uh, say return. And then instead of three on 17, say divisor. Say divisor? Yeah. And then and take off the colon at the end. Uh huh. And then delete line 10. And I believe. Uh, Three clicks should get all of it, <laughs> if you can. It doesn't work? Yeah, working. I see that it doesn't work. No. Dang. Must be something with lag. Oh, I can't, it can't even, oh, <laughs> it's just really slow, sorry. That's crazy, I'm sorry. It's okay, super frustrating you when you got lag and you can't type. Yeah, you know, try. It makes feel incompetent. I know, I've had to remote pair that way and it's infuriating. Yeah, uh, try running test. Might work. <clears throat> Sweet. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we should probably rotate, right? Okay. All right. Um, Nicely done. 
Yeah, I will give job. it over to Dave. All right, so now we got to do the one for the five. Mm -hmm. So before uh, we do that, does this look a little better than it looked before? Should we well, keep it going? Looks to me like yeah. something's missing on line ten. Like we either got to get rid of that line or we got to put something in there. Yeah, you can delete it. Okay. Yeah. But that colon does need to be there. Yeah. Okay. So before right. we finish this pattern out, do we agree that it is better? Or if not, we could put it back. Does anyone have any questions about what we just did? Let's I think maybe yeah. we should yeah. I get I'm getting it. It's coming. There's still like a pretty significant gap, but it's coming. Okay. It looks clunky to me that the five is here with the other thing, considering there's no pair there's no like matching thing down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's fix it. Oh, wait, hold on. No, <laughs> oh, you wouldn't fix that. You would fix, you would just copy line nine mm -hmm. and 10. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that either. We got to change this divisible by thing. So uh, copy this. And wait, who's navigating that? Who, who just had the keyboard? I, have I the just. Keyboard. Yeah, you have the keyboard, but you're also navigating. <laughs> yes, Dave, your your brain is a little too active for the role that you have. Do you want to not have the keyboard and talk to someone else to it? No, I want to do it all and be right. Okay. Um, so I, I have a quick question that's totally a little off topic, but when we're doing this this way, switching every three minutes, it feels to me like we're playing a really slow board game. Mm -hmm. but I'm wondering, is that like an intentional thing? I mean, is that the way this normally feels? I never thought about it in those terms. Um, okay, so it's just me. Never mind. You can pick, you don't have to have a timer at all, uh, or you could pick a longer interval, or I've heard people pick a shorter interval. Uh, I've heard people that want to make sure the tests are green before they rotate. I've heard people that specifically don't care because it's not any one person's code and just hand it off and keep moving. Um, it's just, I, I just, yeah. I like that, that aspect of it because it makes mm -hmm. it feel more like play than work. Nice. Um, then it's working for us. In that respect. We, typically, we typically do five minutes, like when I coach it. Uh, okay. I'll stop having ideas though and just type whatever you guys tell me. <laughs> I have an idea. If you run the test, does that work? Nice. We have a question in the chat. Maybe I'll yeah. type answer this one. What is it? Does Python support something like C sharp extension methods? So you could use something like given number is divisible by three in print. Oh, like it's a it's a method on a number object, I yeah. guess. I haven't done C sharp. Okay. Uh, no idea. I haven't done nearly enough Python. That'd be cool know. if you could. That would make sense. Yeah. I barely know Python. This is about a Python yeah. I know. <laughs> I think in Ruby you can. In Python, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting question. Okay. Okay. Sorry. We'd love to know if that person wants to try it out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, who's the navigator now? Is it Rachel? Uh, Primary navigator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will try to navigate my best. We'll help. So, are we refactoring currently, or are we trying to imp uh, improve anything on this page, or add any tests? Uh, I'm Italian thoughts. Well, we're green, right? So we do we feel more urgently that we want to get this thing to work better, or do we feel more urgently that it it feels funny and we need to improve the code? I kind of like it at the moment. But yeah, my feeling is I'd like to see you know how much of this Fizzbuzz problem we can solve. I'd like to take our next mm -hmm. step and see how it goes. Okay. All right. So then, that's you? Can you run the task? Like we can't see it, right? Can't see the. No, can't see it. Just see the result. Maybe Amitai, we should give a bit of guidance at this part. I don't know. Yeah. What if we bounce back to the instructions and just double check that we're we're on requirements so far? So uh, it says we should write a program that prints the numbers, which is something that Dave said right at the beginning. <laughs> And we still haven't done that part yet. <laughs> so, hmm, maybe that was we a good idea. Run a string or like, how do you? So we, we have two directions we could go here uh, because we have two uncertainties. We have two risks. 
One is that we will never print anything. If we have to stop right now, then we don't print anything. And that could be a pretty big risk if this was a real project. And another is that we only handle some of the cases that we're supposed to handle. And mm. if we had to stop now, we only right. handle some of them. So and which is worse to not finish? And then let's oh, do that first. I mean, I feel like you should put your parameters in. So FizzBuzz should probably go in and then, oh, wait, but is it like MVP? So are we trying to just be like, run it before? This is a real <laughs> question, right? This, this is real stuff. This is, you know, what do we got to okay. do first? And if we had to stop, what would be worse? I mean, if you were yeah. really serious about MVP, you would run Fizz and you would like get the number string and you would see a one to a hundred and you would see where, mm -hmm. it, where it works, right? And then otherwise mm -hmm. you have an incomplete, you can't ship that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Is that in line with what you're thinking? I think between that idea and the fact that Dave's first desire was that we should print some stuff and we still haven't done that, we I think that's what it. we should do next. And okay. then we can Let's sort of it. sort out the edge cases. Sure. That makes sense to me. Troy, you agree with that? Yeah, it's good to me. Okay, so right now we don't print anything. Okay. And we want to print everything that we do. Um, for this to work, we... What's the best way to do it? I guess FizzBuzz, in addition to returning what it thinks, could also print what it thinks. Is that the mm -hmm. easiest way to do it? So I'm not allowed to think, so you have to tell me what to do. Does, does uh -huh. print work, the word print, work in the same way here? I think so. I think it does. Or, mm -hmm. um, okay, so what we want it to do is print the, the numbers from 1 to 100, but it would have to be probably give given number, right? Instead of actually we saying- We should test this out, Rachel. Okay, let's see, <laughs> given number, test. It's gonna fail, but- I think it's just gonna silently do what it did before. What? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get further? Print mm -hmm. given number. What if we take what we just added on line 14 and we move it up between lines eight and nine? Oh, I didn't know that, that made a difference. Mm -hmm. The order definitely does, yeah. Okay, good to know. Computer's kind of thinking a line at a time. Linear. So, yeah. It's not quantum computing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Programming is sometimes not deterministic like that, though. <laughs> Problem is still not solved. Yeah, we still don't okay. see. We don't see the runs. So, Print. Is there another way to show given there number? Can you give me a hint? There must be. I'm gonna Google. Do we, oh, you don't know either? Do we? Do we have to? Uh, I'm gonna Do we have to run this non-test file for it to print or not on this thing? Got Which one? What? Do, what does that mean? Non-test, mm -hmm. like in real life. I mean, outside, do we have to make another file in order for it? Oh. In CyberDojo, I don't know how this works. I couldn't guess, yeah. Okay. You, should we try it or is that? It would be I think it's, it's going to be to do with the Python test runner and what it does with standard out and standard error. So let me just see if I can find an answer. We're using PyTest. Uh, okay. Mike, he's looking it up. We got yeah. some. Up in the chat. Okay. Somebody says this is Shinan Zia. Shinan, I think I'm pronouncing this right. Hang on. It says, "Oh, it's not your code." Nice line. So someone left <laughs> that line. <laughs> so that was the comment in the chat. Okay. <laughs> so shout outs to Shinan Zia. Nice. How many people are watching? Print combining strings and numbers. Six. Maybe. <laughs> Six people think this is really interesting. I just had an idea. Thanks, you know, we tried the veal. It's delicious. Um, Let me I recommend found... an idea. Okay. Uh, go on the left side. Go to cyberdojo. Yeah, and then uh, between the word pie test and that asterisk. Yeah. Type space. And then a dash S as in snazzy, yeah. And now try running the test. What does that do? There's our output. There it is. I see Wait, it. Wait, what? <laughs> How does that work? It's magic. 
<laughs> it says, uh, I looked this up on Stack Overflow, which is a very realistic thing that programmers do. <laughs> and it says, uh, stand uh, for show? when running the test, use the dash S option. All print statements will get printed on the console when the test is run. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. All right, cool. Okay, so cool. what do we see? We see one, two, three, four, five. And then a period. We don't see fizz or buzz, though. No fizz or buzz. Right. So we were, we were trying to solve the problem of can we see anything when we print anything? And now we can. But now we're in, we want to print exactly okay. the same thing that fizz buzz it's time to rotate. thinks about. Yep. Good call. So uh, is, in PyTest, test is the application and S is the one that's telling it to show it. Test with the asterisk means when you press the test button, it's going to show you. Okay. I got it. All right. So who's, who's typing? It's me, uh, but... I'm having a hard time controlling it. So. I think we should go back to test underscore fuzz, fizzbuzz dot py. One second. Does somebody have to grant me the control? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to give it to you. There you go. It's so needy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do I do, Dave? Um, so we need to figure out why that period was shown. Oh, I know. I want to go do the thing I wanted to do. I want you to make that number increase every single time. He has to test first. Yes. Okay. So how do, I, how do I run the test? All right. So we have to figure out how to get it to keep incrementing the number by one all the way up to 100. Okay. I have no idea how to do that. Before we guess do that. I'm guessing you want to say... Uh, a suggestion of what we could do before we start making sure we cover all the cases is yeah. right now uh, we're saying the number that we we asked Fizzbuzz to do something with, but we don't return we don't print what Fizzbuzz concluded for us. So we probably want to print both, both the input and the output, and then figure out how to do that for every time. Right? Okay. So like FizzBuzz of one, all we're saying is one. FizzBuzz of two, all we're saying is two. FizzBuzz of three, all we're saying is three. That's just the input. We want both the input and the output. What does, what, can you right. describe input versus output? Like what is that? Is that like the, the constraint or is that? Uh, just in the context of the function that starts on line eight, input is the number we give it and output yep. is what it returns. Okay. So, right. you, so say what you said again. You said we have. Yeah, yeah. it was it was loaded. Um, right now we're just printing one, two, three, yeah. four, and five. Yeah. But I think it would be interesting to print one and one, two and two, three and fizz, four and four, five and buzz. Okay. Thanks. So we need to. Def oh man, do we need to define fizz buzz dash something variable there? I don't think so. Uh, Oh, no, I see what you no, mean. I know, yeah. I know, I know, yeah. I know. Take it. Um, return, right before line, on line 14, you're going to make a new line and have return fizzbuzz and then equals given number. We have to find some way of saying that. So that it shows, it shows what the fizzbuzz value was and then it says equals and shows what the given I've got it backwards, right? Okay. I, I, I'm following you. What I wanted to ask you is, um, I'm not sure how to type that exactly how you're saying it. So maybe what I would ask is the most senior developer here to chime in and this suggestion. I heard my name. <laughs> uh, okay, let's try this instead. Can I have a beer? <laughs> oh, man, nice. How are we going to be so here? <laughs> We're not that far off, honestly. No, I really think we are uh, delete line nine is what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and rename the function on this line to compute fizzbuzz. Okay. Don't change any of the callers because we're going to define a function that's called fizzbuzz. So go up a line and then enter def fizzbuzz given number colon enter tab uh, 
I want to both get the result of compute fizzbuzz, print it, and then return it. Does that make sense? So let's say uh, result equals. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, compute fizzbuzz of a given number. Got an extra R in there. Okay. God, the line makes it like you can't. Sorry to go back. Okay. Mm, sorry. To hear that. Balls. Okay. Yep. Yeah, of a given number. Okay. And we're going to return that after we print it. So the next thing is to print it. Print result. Like this? Yes, but you have an extra tab. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then one more line after that, which is return result. And then okay. maybe one more line. Yeah. Uh, so this this should pass and it should print the result only. Which actually that's what the that's what the instructions asked for, right? Just the result. So why don't why don't you walk us everyone through like the thought yeah. process behind? Right. Uh, so what we had had before I just talked Troy, Troy through that was we had a function this one that was that had been called fizzbuzz we renamed it but I was trying to make sure that these assertions still pass so I still need to have a function somewhere called fizzbuzz that when you give it a one returns a one when you give it a three returns a fizz and so on uh, it's just that now that functions over here and in addition to computing it using the code we already wrote it also prints it and then it returns it and that way we didn't have to make this thing any smarter. We just had to rename it and wrap it with something that prints. So now you just have to get it to do two things. One is to increment by one each time around, and the other is to get that first line to not have uh, whatever it was. To... Yeah, it was like the name of it equals one. Or the name we have to do fizz buzz as well as a test. Yeah, actually, so, so if we go down Dave's idea just to the end, uh, it would be interesting to print a hundred things and then see which of them are wrong. Okay. Right? Does that make so, sense, Dave? That's where you wanted to go? Yes. Yes, that's where I want to go. Whoever's yeah. the navigator, let me know. <coughs> Who is the navigator? Uh, I think I, I am. Think it's, I think it might be you, yeah. It's still me, right? Yeah. Okay, so we've got to figure out <coughs> the number that we have and, and increment it by one. Um, so maybe after line, uh, uh, gosh, <laughs> I guess after line 23, because you want to go all the way through this and then come back around. That's line 23, okay. So we have to find a way to setting the given number is the given number plus one up to 100. Right. So there's a technique we can use um, called a uh, for loop. We can do something like that. Okay. Uh, but since I'm not supposed to say, maybe uh, somebody in the mob can <laughs> tell me what's right. <laughs> yep. Hey, man. Uh, let's do it like this. Um, to print the rest of the results from six to 100, right? That's where we want to go? Right. Uh, put a new line after six inside test fizzbuzz at the end of it. Okay. And tab. And how do we say a for loop from six to 100 in Python? Do you remember, Troy? Not off the top of my head. I would have to look it up. I'm looking it up. I'm a, I, I know Java, not Python. So this is new for me as well. So. Mm -hmm. Totally different in Java. Python for loop, googly googly. Uh, yes, got it. So four is right, and then uh, our, our little variable, we can call it i, I guess, because Fortran called it i. So for i space in space a function called range. Yep, okay. From six comma 100, I suppose. Comma 100, okay. I think so, colon. I'll call it. Okay. Yeah. Enter. Uh, one more tab and then fizzbuzz of I. Okay. So let's explain what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, just let's see what it looks like. Yes, so these are not tests. This is code that we're putting in our test function, but they're not tests because they're not assertions. This is just a convenient place that we know the test runner calls and that we know gets output to happen. And so we want to get the rest of the output to happen. So what this is going to do is in order, it's going to do the assertions we already had, which will also print the results we already saw. And then we'll continue from six through 100 calling FizzBuzz for each of those numbers, which should print the result. Yeah, so, so and now we're using range, it's automatically just going to keep increasing it up to that point. Yes. It's it some magic Python construction for the idea that you had. Yeah. Yes. So it's going to automatically go by one. By can you could you have range not go by ones, but go by fives or tens or something like that? Maybe I didn't see that in the example. Let's see if this actually works. And then I'll get yeah. up. I mean, you can do four loops of that type as well, but this one is. Okay. Yeah, I think range right. is by integer. Uh, okay. So test away. Okay. Okay. Got a lot of stuff. This is awesome. Does it go so all we gotta do is do the buzz one now. Does it go all the way to 100 at the end? Uh, let's see. Goes, ooh. Well, so we gotta fix that period at the end and we gotta fix the way the one shows up on the first line. This is known as an off by one error and programmers <laughs> make this all the time. This is a real thing that I really made a mistake on right now. You just saw it. Uh, I wanted to include 100 but be but less than 100. It didn't include 100. So I think we need to give it a 101 or something. Oh. OK. Yeah. Let's run it again. Yeah, and then that should at least get us through to 100. And then we can see what needs changing. It does get us to 100. OK. OK. So I think there is one case in the instructions that we don't handle. Is it time to rotate? Yep, it is. Oh, it's time to rotate. I'm going to tie your option. Cool. All right. Uh, who navigates? Troy? I'll navigate. Yep. Okay. So if you could go to the, uh, and I'll try to go slow. So if you can go to back to the test file. Uh, what don't we handle right right now? Is that where we're going? Biz buzz. Yeah. Okay. So if I just bounce here for a second. Yep. So the instructions say that if it's multiple of three and five, like it is for number 15, we should see this. Do we see this? No. No, we only got this. Okay. So yeah, Troy. All right. First we're on the test, I would say. We just did that, though, right? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, so they're, they're all fast. Right. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the test file. In order to make FizzBuzz pass, we can, uh, if you copy lines 18 and 19, and <coughs> change the 5 to a 15, okay. and change that to FizzBuzz. So does that, does that make sense to you guys in the moment? Yes. OK. I have a question. Um, we don't have a test for that, question mark. Good point, sorry. <laughs> you're supposed to, you're always supposed to write a test, so I apologize. I was so anxious to get it going. Um, it would make right. sense if that would work, but we don't have any for you. Right, right. So yeah. let's write the test for that. Uh, if you go to the line six and, and make a new line after line six, right? Change that to 15, and then change that to this buzz, and then let's run the test. Oopsie. Okay. Wrong finger habit. Saving, saving, saving. <laughs> All right. And Ruh -ruh. because fizz is not equal to fizz buzz, we know <laughs> that. We expected that, though, because we didn't have wrote the code yet. So. so back to what we did before. Change that to 15 and then to fizz buzz. And then run the test. Wait a minute. Seemed like it should have worked, but it did not. So why didn't it work? Assert fizz. Because this happened first. Ah, okay. So we have to put that first. Like so? Uh yes. Let's try that. Cool. And let's scroll and see if it does it correctly. 
So between 89 and 91, that's 90. That's a multiple of 15. It says fizz buzz. And Why is it going so far over? Because we're starting at line six. In this OK. I have an idea uh, also. Starting. OK. There we go. <laughs> All right. Starting. OK. So then um, one through 100. And so 15. Right? So after 14, it should say fist buzz, and it does, right? Okay. And then um, 30 again should do the same. Right. And also, like, we don't have to eyeball this too carefully because uh, we already got three to be fizz, we already got five to be buzz, and those tests didn't break. We don't have failures. So they didn't get worse than they were before. They're the same as they were before. Plus, we handled this case correctly. So we should refactor now, I guess. That sounds cool. And I have probably time to switch. OK. No, we're almost done. Is it Rachel's turn? Yes. Yep. Somebody wants to see the test again in the chat. So we're going to, Rachel's going to run it anyway. OK. OK. I'm going to run the test. And they would like to see it. So in the chat, we're showing the results um, of one through a hundred. And okay, so it's working there now. And as Let you can me, see, yeah, right. Let me we, we have to stop it from going over. The output's a little interleaved. Um, we can make this clearer if we have two different tests: one that just tests the results, and one that prints from one to a hundred. Because right now, uh, we're going to see this one twice. We're going to see one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, buzz. And then we're going to go back from 15 to 6, going through 15 again. So it's not exactly right anymore. So let me propose that we, uh, in front of line one, uh, hit enter a couple times. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> Space. Yeah, and then go up to line one and say def uh, print fizz. Uh, no, we got to call it test something because that's how the test runner finds it. Uh, test underscore print everything or something like that. Print everything, all one word? No, however you like. Yeah. Yeah, and then empty parentheses and a colon. Uh, empty parentheses and a colon. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, uh, cut from line 11 and 12. Just take it out of there. Take it out. And move it up to the first one. Yeah. Put it in not in the parentheses, but below it. So below it. enter and then paste. And then do I tab or no? Uh, it depends if it, but yeah, I guess you're going to have to tab the first one. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, and then change the 6 to a 1. So that it goes the whole thing through. Do you see that? Okay. Sorry, say that again. Uh, on line two, where it says the number six. Mm -hmm. Now make that a one. You want to start at the beginning. You want to print everything. And fizz. Okay, that looks good. And then uh, from line seven through twelve, every place it says fizz buzz, it should say compute fizz buzz instead. So everywhere it says which sorry. Uh, so, for example, line seven where it says fizzbuzz, yeah, it should say compute underscore fizzbuzz, and likewise for the next five. Yeah. So, Amitai, do you want to explain why we're changing this part? Yeah. Um, so now we have two different tests. We have the one that tests fizzbuzz and the one that prints everything, right? Uh, and this is the one that tests what fizzbuzz does when we compute it, and so. I took all the printing out of there. In fact, we should put line six uh, between line one and two. So cut that line out as well. If I were you, I'd be so mad right now with my yeah. inability to get a <laughs> line out of there. Very frustrating. Yeah. Sorry, where would you like it? Uh, above line two. Above line two. So, yeah. And we have. 
Tab it. Tab? Yeah, it needs a tab. Uh, delete line three. And then on line seven, back that up a little bit to line up. Yeah, so just to finish the explanation, we have two things called test. We have test print everything, which is just printing. And we have test fizzbuzz, which is only testing the result here for the examples that we care about so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can run independently, and they don't overlap each other. And if we run it now, uh, the assertions should pass, and the printing should be 1 to 100 without repeating anything. So let's check the assertion at the bottom real quick. Mm -hmm. OK, so it says two passed, right? Mm -hmm. So then both of our tests are passing. And Is that what that means? That's what that means. Yes, two yeah. passed. And a minute yeah. ago, we only had one, because we only had one function so, called test, and now we have two. Can you scroll back up for a second? So this is the first time that the one has appeared on a line by itself. So what made that happen? Hmm. It was, uh, see on line two, where I put a print starting? Yeah. That just, um, instead of putting one on the same line, it puts starting on the same line, and then it's a new line for everything. Okay. Yeah, all right. Cheated. Well, so cheated. All we have to do is get the number to not go up to 106. I think it does that it, right it already doesn't i think yeah. if you because it's not the line number you're looking at you're just looking at the straight like the actual so 98 oh, 99, okay. Okay. So, this, so then we did it right right so, yeah, so someone in the so. chat someone in the chat wants to see the results so let's take a look at if we did it correctly right okay so do you want me to go back to this and then we'll do the full let's check the instructions for a second i think yeah. that the fizz and the buzz and the fizz buzz are supposed to be capitalized, which we didn't do. I mean, geez. <laughs> so we can test drive this. So the business wants you. We can't mm -hmm. bring it. So replace all the lowercase? Just do that one and see what happens. Oh, test. just do you want me to? OK. Yeah. It didn't work. So the output is still the output, but scroll down. Yeah, you got to go down. change it at the bottom. To the assert now. Sorry. Yep, we didn't change the output at all, but our next test will actually compare the strings and they're not the same, which is good. That test Did should fail. Okay. Right, it's off by a couple Sorry, it's not scrolling down anymore. I know what to fix. Oh, there you go. It's Dave's turn anyway, so. <laughs> okay. That means I'm <laughs> typing, right? <laughs> which means I can't share my idea. Okay. You can share it. Go ahead. There we go. Okay. So we need to go back here. And we've got to make that a capital B and this a capital F. Not yet. Well, down here, we've got to make the match. So this. Right now, we have one failing assertion that we should get to green before we do anything else. That's what I think. Okay. So I have to change this. Yes. And that should pass. And then we know we're in the right direction. And if you scroll to the bottom, it should be happy. Come on. And it is. All right. Cool. So yeah, so, now keep going. Now I'm going to do it for buzz. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, is it OK for me to do this one too? I buzz? would think so. Yeah, because we just proved that we understood the cause and effect. And so this seems like the same cause and effect. OK. Right? Capital B. Mm -hmm. And okay. buzz needs a capital B. Right. I think this is green, but I think a, an acceptance test would fail if we had one. Let's let's run. Let's uh, yeah. Let's see what the instructions say again for that one. I think I know one thing that I got wrong. Yeah, yeah I got to capitalize the B in business. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't do it there first. Do it in the test. Do it there first. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it the way it was. We are test driven. <laughs> so this, so that, it requires a lot of discipline to not jump the gun on that stuff because it seems like if that's where my eye goes first, that's what I'm going to do first. It can uh, to begin with, and then uh, my feeling about it, having done it for a while, is that it requires less discipline than other ways of working. Because I get awesome feedback when I'm willing to make small yeah. steps one at a time. So this looks like we did it. I think so. So how, come, yeah. how come it didn't it work that time, but not the first time? Like when we, when, when I changed the caps in this, in the surgeon, it didn't, 
apply the change. I had to because return. Because you changed it, so you changed it up here, but not down here. Which was great. That was an awesome thing oh, to do. Oh, I missed that. I yeah. thought that you were testing and you didn't have a capital B in the returns. So no, I you changed it for the assertion, but not for the, for the returns. Okay. I wasn't that showing it. So it's Which, just got to be consistent. We did this, that was on really, this was really awesome. I'm, cool. I think I'm going to make my students watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it really was because like I've talked to, I've interviewed Woody about this stuff a bunch of times. And it's, and it's always it sounds really cool, but I through it. It seems a lot less frightening to me now than it did before. But I would think that if you're a seasoned developer, it would be kind of irritating sometimes to have to take like the noob and be like, okay, type it this way. You know, that, would, that would get irritating. Well, I don't know. If you were going to be on a team with me, I'd be really happy to bring you along. Oh, yeah. Come on, Dave. We're doing how, long, <laughs> how long would it take an, a noob like, just, like Dave and I, I to... Yeah. <laughs> Go How long ahead. would it take us to learn like Python or even test driven um, programming if we were starting at like day one? How, do, how many sessions do you think we would need to be like, oh, I have a rough idea of how this might work? I know that's hard I to have answer. no idea. Uh, well, Python's supposed to be pretty easy though, right? It is. Yeah, Python is definitely a great choice for starting. And I mean, I. I've programmed before in a bunch of languages and Python is great for me too. Um, yeah. I don't know how to prognosticate how long it takes because <laughs> when I do workshops like this, uh, like when we did it at a coach camp for 50 minutes, um, we didn't get as far as fizz. I think we got just barely not quite as far as fizz. Um, <laughs> well, it, to be fair, it took, us, it took us almost two hours to get there. So yeah. Right. But I, so I don't I know do the, the, the end to end of, uh, people starting from nothing, getting to where they feel like they can be productive. I usually do this for people that are programming in some language and need the TDD technique or need the mob programming technique. And it takes a few days of that and they're a little bit better, you know? So I don't have a way to guess That's fair. what would be true. This was really cool. Thank you yeah, guys for thanks. doing this. Yeah, this it's a lot really of fun for me too. Yeah. Better understanding now, yeah, so. And thank you to all six people that watched. Yeah, thank, thank you six people. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, we'll put this on YouTube as well. Uh, cool. That way too, so. um, thanks, Amitai, for. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Amitai. Sure. And thank so you. patient. And thank you, Agile Uprising. Yeah. Oh, do we, have, do we have anything we want to like plug our own Twitters or anything you're doing we want to plug while we're before we slam? I'm good. This was this was great. I don't really feel compelled to plug anything. I just. Feel <laughs> Just happy to be here. Wow. Where can we find you on Twitter, Dave? Uh, Mr. Sungo, M R S U N G O. Okay. And, I, and I work for Leading Agile and I teach uh, CSM and CSPO classes. Okay. And I am Rachel Gertz. Uh, you can find me on, on Twitter at The Stray Muse. And I am training PMs in an apprenticeship program uh, completely remote. And so this would be very helpful for them in terms of learning the uh, sort of the big picture around code. And you should tell them about your magazine, Rach. Oh, Coke's Mag. Yeah, you can, it's, it's attached to our site, but it's just if you want to write for us and we want to tell us some stories, then that's, that's the place you can go. So submit your, your idea. I'm sorry. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at schmonz, S-C-H-M-O-N-Z. Um, <laughs> I also have a little podcast called Agile in Three Minutes, which is audio only, so you don't have to look at my weird face. And... Um, <laughs> There, I'm an independent coach, and I can offer you workshops like these or anything else that suits your context. That's awesome. And you can find me on Twitter at G4S Troy, also at Agile Uprising on Twitter. Uh, we have the Agile Uprising. We have a free coalition. So if you want to go on there and ask any questions, we have a kind of a network of Agile coaches who offer free discussion about anything you want so you can be brand new to agile you can be an experienced person it doesn't matter and people will talk to you for free and there's no trolling so far so it's very nice experience so get in so, there and uh, troll <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, that's at coalition.agileuprising.com and my last plug is for a new tool that i co-owned co-created called lean agile intelligence and you can find that at leanagileintelligence.com and it is a coaching tool and a way to help teams and organizations improve. So. And, and we'll be posting a video of Troy and I going through it together probably in the next couple of days. Right. Cool.
All right. Well, cool. Thanks, thanks, guys. This was really Thanks, great. Guys. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah.